Alright, in this tutorial, let's consider a perfect gas in a closed system that's undergoing an adiabatic change, specifically a reversible adiabatic expansion or compression. Um, for the most part, all of the formulas apply equally. It's just that when we're asked to estimate what is the value or sign of um, Q, W, delta U, delta H, delta T, delta P, delta V, uh, whether they're less than zero, greater than zero, or equal to zero, then we'll have to get specific about which exactly direction we're talking about as an expansion or compression. Okay, so when I first see the condition of adiabatic, I'm immediately thinking of what that means physically, and that means that there is no energy being transferred as heat between the system um, the system and the surroundings. And so right away, because it's adiabatic, I'm going to write that dq is equal to zero. And because dq is equal to zero, then q is equal to zero. So where do I go after that? Should I think about work right away, or should I think about internal energy? And I would say, um, Look, just think about the first law and write it out. And, and it's always a great place to start once you've noted the condition and its, and its consequence. Um, so du is equal to dq plus dw. And um, I'm sorry, I don't know why this is not focusing properly sometimes. I have to do something like this to get it back on, and there we go. I don't really want to stop the video and start over again. So we just said that this was equal to zero, and so it is the case for these adiabatic, reversible adiabatic compressions or expansions on perfect gases that du is equal to dw. And we might see the process described right there um, because we have a state property being equal to a path-dependent one, but then the path is not um, random anymore, it is adiabatic, and so that since it's fixed, it's okay to make it equal. So this kind of looks like a sticking point that, well, that's great, that Q is zero, and then if I find work or internal energy change, um, one or the other, they're e that I've basically found both because they're equal to each other, but what is the formula? And so although this almost seems like, I'm just going to tear this out. A, um, a, a TED end, it's actually our starting point. And it's our starting point for a couple of really important formulas that help us. Now, um, du is equal to n cv molar dt, and dw is equal to a minus p dv. Now I'm actually just going to write this as n cv dt. It is molar, um, but I'm just working with the expressions here, and I know that if I were to plug in, I would need a number uh, of moles, and I'm looking for the molar cv. But I'm just working a formula at the moment, so just to keep it a little less cluttered. All right. Minus PDV, what do I do with this? I'm not integrating it, so don't jump to integration at this point. But remember, this is a perfect gas, and I know that PV is equal to NRT, so I can substitute pressure for NRT over volume, and that's precisely what I'm going to do. NRT over volume, and then don't forget the DV on the end. Uh, now, I have two things changing, temperature and volume. And so I should bring everything to do with temperature to the other side and everything with the change in volume over here, but my volume is already there. So what I'm going to do is take this temperature and bring it over to here. In the meantime, I have a number of moles on both sides that can cancel. So I'm bringing temperature over here. So I have CV1 over TDT is equal to a negative r1 over v dv. Something else we do in all of our um, 
bits of logic like this is that when we have two constants, um, we usually bring them together. So as a, as a product, as a single term. So what I'll do is just stick them together, but I'm not going to rename them another variable. So if I bring r over here, I'll have cv over r. And that's going to free up after integration my volume ratio. So if I were looking to develop a formula for v final, for example, that's the way I would go. I'm looking, although I didn't state it at the beginning, uh, to develop a formula for the t final. So what I'm going to do then is bring my cv over to this side, and that's going to free up my volume ratio when, when I do the integration and get rid of the inverse log. So this will stay as 1 over t dt, and then I have my negative sign. I'm putting a circle around the negative sign so that I really don't forget it. And this is r over cv, 1 over v dv. OK, now we are ready to integrate. So I'll integrate this. And I'm wondering if what I'm going to do here is just put the integral sign here, because I know that r over cv are constant over my volume change. My integral of 1 over t dt from between my limits of t1 and t2 is the ln of t final, or you could write t2 and t1. I'm going to write t final, t initial. Then I have my r over cv, the negative sign. And I have the ln of v final over v initial. I'm going to get rid of that negative sign right away. This side stays the same. But I get rid of the negative sign by flipping this ln ratio. So now it's v initial over v final. My next step is to get is to take the inverse ln of both sides of this equation so that um, I have a nice temperature ratio as a result, with no cluttering up with the log, natural logarithm. And on this side, I will have v initial over v final. So the coefficient now of this log expression becomes the exponent. That's how that looks. And so I have a lovely formula here whether I need to isolate for t1 or t final. Um, but in an adiabatic change, I can't stress how important it is to be able to determine what delta t is. And so you'll be given one of the temperatures somehow, either directly as a t1, or let's scoot back here, or you know n and t and p, and that's your only unknown. So you can do PVNRT just on this single state, not on the change, right, but just on the single state. And so t1 is equal to, well, if PV equals NRT, you can isolate, rearrange your formula for a temperature. OK, so um, I would know what t initial is. And let's just rearrange this now for t final. So t final is equal to t initial multiplied by v1 over vf r over cv. Now if you know what the identity of the gas is, you can look up its cp value in a table and uh, subtract r from the cp value to get cv. Or if you want to treat it as a perfect gas, in terms of its heat capacity, um, you would sorry, you would just uh, r, write r over cv. Cv is three halves r, so that would go out, and then my exponent becomes two thirds. Okay, so again, I've gone out of focus. Let me bring it back in, and here we go. Paper is not flat, so it's not liking that. So let's fix that right away. OK. There we go. That's better. So that's my formula for t final. Um, you'll 
Notice going back where I brought the two constants together and freed up the temperature side, and I ended up with R over CV on this side. Go back to that place in the calculation. I just folded this over, but let's find it. Right here, you see, where I took the CV and the R as two constants and put them together. Alternatively, I could have written CV over R here, and that would free up the volume. Okay, so actually I think it's important that we do that, and since there's room here on the page, let's do that. So it would have been from this point, and um, so I brought CV over this way. In this derivation, I'm going to bring R over here. And so that gives me CV over R integral 1 over T dt, and that is equal to a minus 1 over V dV. So I end up with CV over R ln T final over T initial equals ln of, and it would be the negative ln V final over V initial, but I'm going to take care of that negative, and that would become V initial over V final. And then I want to do the inverse ln, so I get T final over T initial raised to the power of CV over R is equal to V initial over uh, V final. And so I can rearrange for V final in that formula. And again, CV over R, I look up either a CV in a table or I look up CP in the table for the particular gas that's behaving perfectly. If I look up CP, I subtract R from CP to get CV, and then I divide by R and get this exponent. Otherwise, for a perfect gas, again, CV is uh, estimated as 3 halves the value of R, that is over R, tick, tick, and that exponent then becomes 3 halves. And remember, so that gives me a formula for V initial or V final, whichever one I want to isolate. This, usually the more important line, gives me a formula for T final, or T initial if I were to rearrange. And my exponent here is 2 thirds. I'm just going to flip that for a second. Remember, see here it was 3 halves. And that's because it's the other way around. Okay, so I have a formula, very important formula, for T final. Super, super important. Um, so that gives me T final, V final, and then I need to know um, what is a P final. And here you make use of uh, the formula that P1, V1, gamma is a constant for an adiabat. Constant for an adiabat. In the same way that PV, um, well, I didn't need the ones there, did I? No. PV gamma is a constant for an adiabat in the same way that PV is a constant for an isotherm. And so I was jumping the gun a bit there. So that means that P1, V1, gamma is equal to P2, V2, gamma. So I can isolate for P2 or P final, if you like. And so P2, which is P final, is equal to P1, V1, gamma, divided by V2, gamma. And so that's equal to P1 v1 over v2 raised to the gamma. And if you like final and initial instead, then the formula for p final is p initial, v initial over v final gamma, where gamma is cp over cv. Now again, for a perfect gas, so we don't know the identity of it, it's just your generic perfect gas, cp is 5 halves R, and CV is 
three halves are. So the r's go out, and I'm left with 5 over 2 divided by 3 over 2, or multiplied by 2 over 3. And that gives me 5 over 3. And so now my gamma is 5 over 3. And the focus is jumping around again. I really apologize for that. I know it must be really annoying to follow along. So there is, um, I think it's part of the problem is the light is not very good tonight. So there's my formula for right here, for P final. Um, now, coming back to what is Q, what is W, what is delta U. Let's do it in this little square here. So we had Q was equal to 0, and we have um, work equal to delta U, which is N C V molar delta T. See, very important to find delta T, and therefore T final, and so on. And delta H is equal to delta U plus delta of the PV. And so delta H is equal to delta U, which is the work, great, plus PV is equal to NRT. Pressure and volume are changing. So if you know P2, V2, and P2, P1, V1, just like in the last tutorial, this guy is actually P2, V2 minus P1, V1. Not P delta V and not V delta P, because both pressure and volume are changing. But because this is a perfect gas, I can substitute PV for NRT. And so delta NRT in brackets would be N2RT2 minus N1RT1. Of course, N is constant. And so this is really NR and then T2 minus T1, or simply delta T. So again, that delta T figures prominently. So Q is 0, work is internal energy, and CV delta T. And delta H is the always, you see, H is equal to U plus PV. So delta H is equal to delta U, got it, plus NR delta T. Okay? And if I um, slip back here for a second, so we did all of that, just think about the sign of delta T, delta V, delta P, delta U, and delta H for an expansion or for a compression. And your choices are greater than, equal to, or equal to zero. Greater than, less than, or equal to zero. And um, I'll just leave that for something for you to think about. So no numbers, just qualitative. All right, that is adiabatic.